Hello, hello, and this is Notary Life with Kimmy. So hey guys, today I'm gonna to talk about what type of payments I accept when I do general notary work. So there are many options out there. So I'll go over what the options are and then I'll tell you what I accept, okay? And then actually I'm gonna show you what that process looks like as I'm collecting payment after I perform my services, okay? So just to get started, some payment options out there are Zelle, Cash App, PayPal, Square, Venmo, it's so many, it's so many. So you have to choose what's best for your business. I do not accept checks on the norm. I might take a check, I've taken two in my business, two. And that was an elderly person, and a lot of times they may have checks. So if you do take a check from someone, and let's just say that check is returned for any reason, $35, $40, even 100 and you're not able to recoup that, we'll have to put that under profit and loss or whatever, probably on your taxes and just call that the cost of doing business. Because sometimes elderly people will only have a check. So that's about the only people I'm taking a check from is the elderly. Also, I have taken a check from a trust. Someone had a trust account and they needed some trust documents done and that was the only way that they could pay me. So did I want to take that check? I really did not. <laughs> I'll be honest, I didn't. But I saw the trust, everything, it looked le you know, legitimate. So I went ahead and, and took it. And again, some things are just gonna be the cost of doing business. You can't set your whole business plan on what may happen, what might happen. So I went ahead and, as I stated before, I took that check. So for my business, because of my bank account, the way it's set up, they don't take um, Zelle anymore, only on, only on a personal account. So my business account, I can do um, Cash App, or Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express, debit card, credit card, that's what I take. So for my business, I accept those methods and also cash. Some people do not like to take, um, do not accept Cash App because they said it could be too fraudulent or too many things go wrong with it. I've never had a problem with Cash App and I've been doing it for a couple years, never had a problem. Uh, I did have one issue with my credit card before. I allowed the customer to tell me the number and she inadvertently transposed the last two numbers. So the payment got rejected. And I was like, well, I know I performed her services. Why would she cancel the payment? I actually called her and I said, hey, I said, this is Kimberly. I noticed the payment was returned. And she said, oh no, I would never do that. She said, remember I even tipped you and I gave you a review, everything was great. So she looked into it and she called me back and she was like, no, I didn't. So she um, took a few more minutes. I looked into it and what we found out, and I really appreciated that client. That's why you want to have a good relationship with your clients because she actually looked into it even deeper because she was so disturbed by my phone call and she called me back and she said, oh, Kimberly, the last four numbers were wrong and I never got charged on my card. And I said, oh, okay, by the time she figured it out, I also figured out what happened. So after that point, I do not... Um, usually let them read the card number to me and I have a square I'm going to show you that in just a second how to process uh, how I process payments so with the square you have several ways you can do it you can use a little chip um, that you see most people stick in their phone you can use a contactless machine or you can manually type it in so I'm going to show you those methods shortly okay and you can also use um, I have a receipt book the old-fashioned receipt book because a lot of our older clients prefer a handwritten receipt so I have a receipt book and I also have an electronic receipt book for my younger clients who may not want a paper receipt, okay? So I'll show you and tell you the name of those shortly. So these are the different payment methods that I take. We wanna make it convenient for our clients to do business with us. We don't want them running around looking for $40 or $50. They have to go to this ATM, that ATM, go buy a candy bar, get some cash back. We don't want them doing all that. We want them to make it, we want to make it as easy as we can for people to do business with us. And they will appreciate that when they say, well, I got to go get some cash. I said, oh, no, you don't. I said, what, what type of payment do you have? And I usually try to include that um, in my initial screening sometimes. Honestly, I forget that a lot. But I'll show you shortly how I wrap up a transaction. I've explained what type of payments that I do accept. So I just want to do a mock demonstration with you so you can see what the collection of the money looks like after you finish your general notary work. So I've completed the signing here for Mrs. Smith and she's decided that she's going to be paying with her, how are you paying today Mrs. Smith? MasterCard. Okay, and we thank you for your service. So your total is 
$50. If you go ahead and stick it here inside the square for me. Thank you, and I'll process it right here on my phone. Okay, okay, you can pull it out, ma'am. Thank you. So to process that payment, we use the square. And you can see I have my um, contactless square here, and she just stuck her card in there. Another option is to use this one. I'm sure most people are familiar with that. And you attach it to your phone. I'm not able to use that one because my phone cover is too big. And then the last method of payment would be to enter it manually via the Square app. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and write a receipt for Mrs. Smith. Okay, Mrs. Smith, here's your receipt. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So you use a receipt book. You can buy those at Dollar General. Um, it's a pack of 50. I go through quite a bit of these. And one other tip as far as your receipt book is make sure you write the beginning date and the ending date because you will go through quite a few of these. I also have an electronic receipt that I will use also. And the app is called Cash Receipt. And you can actually type a receipt, tell what kind of payment you accepted, and electronically send it to that person. Also, with your square payment, you can send it electronically via text or email. Well, we want to thank Mrs. Smith for her participation today. I hope this has given you some tips on how you can collect money in your notary business. I personally do not have my clients to prepay services. Um, I don't prepay too much, so I don't expect them to do it. If I get there for some reason and I cannot perform the transaction, normally I just do that as the cost of doing business. It's very rare that it happens when you get there. If you do good screening on the front end, that shouldn't happen. And I know that's why some people do want a prepayment. Now, if it's a jail signing, hospital signing, or something like that, I'm going to start requesting a prepayment. The reason I would have them prepay half of their um, service call, at least for hospitals and for the nursing home and also for jail signing, is because sometimes it's so many variables with those signings that it may not happen and you've driven quite a ways. Just for example, I had a jail signing, it was gonna be my first, and it was 45 minutes from my house and I was 10 minutes away from the appointment and got a call saying that they no longer needed me as the notary because they couldn't get the person out. I was upset. I had not charged them a trip fee or travel fee. And like I said, that's not normally part of my process. But after that happened, and I know I just said don't make decisions based on one thing, but I know for a fact that hospital signings, jail signings, and all those, anything that could take a long time or a kind of different signing, Anything can happen. You can get there and it won't it won't happen. If you and it has cost me time, energy, etc., resources to get there. So the, after that happened in the future, like I said, that will be part of my business plan to charge um, at least half of whatever I'm going to, or at least a minimum tri trip charge, at least a minimum trip charge to go to those particular signings. So that's why um, I end up changing my business plan on that. So that'll happen too. As you go through your journey and your notary and your business, you'll find that sometimes you have to make changes. What you thought was going to be a good idea for your business may not be in the long run. Or, you know, or you have so many different things that happen. You say, I need to readdress that. Okay. So just because you have to change, it's okay. It's your business. That's the best part about this. It's your business. Well, I wish you the best out there. This is Notary Life with Kimmy. Bye.